and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the heart to encourage and equip you in your own personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resources, why don't you visit teawithtest.com or connect with me on Instagram, Tessiana. Good morning. If you are struggling to find this, I'm so sorry. I am late because I couldn't figure out how to go live. So that was that. Hello, Taryn. Yay, Sins, I see you. I'm sorry I didn't respond to your message. I was frantically trying to go live. Trying to figure it out. If you're wondering where I am, thanks, Miriam. Appreciate it. Hello, Charlene. Um, hello, Case. If you're wondering where I am, I'm in my mom's very messy office. Don't tell her I said that. Um, I literally get anxious in here <laughs> because I'm. Um, I don't do clutter. It's not cluttered, it's actually a lot of things that is needed. But it's it's a lot. Hello Linda and Jill. Oh Ash, thanks for helping me. You and Amza save the day. Um Alzana and Colette, good morning. Lovely to have you with us. Hello Keeks. Hello Steph. Welcome to Tea with Tess. Hello Joe. Special girl, hope you're all well and that you enjoyed last week. Um, Ash was with you last week, I've heard it was amazing. I even label my label maker, I do, it's actually quite sad. I need to be more in the moment. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just very grateful to Ash, she stepped in for me last week and can't believe we just keep going and I've heard it was beautiful and I'm excited to watch it and learn and grow like only we can from each other. It's important, hello shells and hello cans. Ashley with a time is blessing. She is a very beautiful girl, very grateful for her and just very grateful for this community and for the love that you have all shown me in this past week. Um, I have no doubt that Ash was amazing. She's amazing at everything she does, <laughs> which is, is really beautiful. Hi, Christine. So lovely to see you pop on live with us this morning. Christine is a very dear fr friend of our family. Um, so it's lovely to see you. Hello, Ange. Welcome. Hello, Dee. Sorry, I'm just taking a moment to say hi to everyone. I want to pause a bit and take everything in. So, um, this morning I actually don't have a plan. I thought I would just share a little bit about where I'm at and I would fill you in on what I think things will, will look like for a, for a little while and perhaps we can just take it from there. Um, uh, I know that most of you who are online now know that um, I tragically lost my dad last week um, he we think um, we aren't 100% certain but um, we we believe strongly believe that he had a heart attack on in the early hours of Monday morning not the early hours it was six o'clock actually on Monday morning last week and it was a shock I suppose I don't know how else to um, describe it, to be honest. But um, yeah, I woke up on Monday morning, and I, I'm not often on my phone in the morning. Hello, everyone jumping on. Hello, Cherise. Cherise, can you just confirm? I think I got flowers from a Cherise, and it didn't have a surname. I'm trying to figure out who she, the Cherise is in the class. Um, anyway, I happened to be on the phone responding to a friend who was saying that their son, they were in hospital with their son, who wasn't well, which is very rare for me. I try not to f on the phone in the morning. And in that moment, I received a WhatsApp call from my mom to say that um, 
my dad had stopped breathing and she had tried CPR and then called paramedics and it wasn't looking good um, and to ask me to pray and obviously as you do in that state of utter chaos <laughs> and shock in that moment thank you Sharice I'm gonna I'll send you a message um, uh, I did many things I tried to turn on the TV and put a, a Jesus song on a song that just said the name of Jesus it's all I can remember saying and um, eventually a very kind <laughs> my kids kind of rushed to the uh, Dilla was away in Joburg um, and my kids took the reins and they ran next or well, then run next door they called our neighbor beautiful girl new neighbors actually but I know her from my childhood beautiful girl and um, she came to me and we began to pray and phoned my mom back and she said no it's it's really not looking good and so I just got in my car and I'm grateful that I live very close um, and after I arrived um, they continued to, to try to resuscitate him for a little while just probably about 10 to 15 minutes maybe not even maybe five I don't know and um, but it, it just it didn't work and we realized actually that it, um, he died <laughs> um, and so that was my strategy last week and I don't know part of me sharing with this with you is just so that you know that these things are real and we don't we don't, often don't plan for them I had a plan last Monday I had a plan to um, organize a party for Joel his birthday was last week and I was going to, I'd left it all to the Monday morning because I'd been away the week before and I'm that last minute kind of go when it comes to parties because, I don't know, I don't know why I do that, so I should be better planned. Anyway, I had a plan and then suddenly my plan just, I didn't need my plan. And anyway, that was a really hard day um, and it's been a really rough week. I must be honest and someone asked me this morning how are you feeling today and all I could say was sad sad <laughs> I don't feel sad today I feel sad sad um, and it's just it is what it is I am now not living as I was in 2022 I'm now grieving and I didn't plan for that and I didn't ask for it and it's hard and it's uh, it's complicated and it's just where I'm at and so I've always chosen intentionally and I have committed myself to this community to be honest and to be authentic and real but also to facilitate I, I would hope a conversation between you and Jesus and perhaps what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life and so nothing has changed I am committed to being honest and authentic and real and yet my hope is that I would still facilitate a conversation between you and Jesus and so that is why I'm here today because I am utterly devastated and I am I feel like my heart's being shattered because my dad I keep saying was my hero but he is my hero I suppose him being dead doesn't change that um, but it's just very painful and so my commitment to show up is not because I need to prove myself to you or because I want to I want to show you that I can do hard things in hard times or because I need your affirmation or because it's because I believe that my calling doesn't change what I believe to be true about myself and about who God is doesn't change just because this is really hard and I've shared some of my most precious moments with you on, on this platform. The real highs and some really, what I thought were big lows. Um, and this is probably one of the lowest 
knows. And I'm really, I am really sad, sad. <laughs> but I'm also, I'm very grateful. And so I actually, I wanted to take a moment to just thank you. I have received an outpouring of love from this community, one that I never thought. I knew, I knew it would come, but I never anticipated the magnitude of it. And how you are, you are across an airwave and you're online and not physically present. And yet I have felt every single one of you through the messages and the love that I have received through uh, Facebook Messenger. Some of them to my personal WhatsApp. People have emailed me. I have received flowers from people in this community. And I never knew how much I needed it. You don't know how much you need people until you need people. And I always presumed that I would, if I lost someone close to me, my go-to behavior, because I don't like to be the center of attention um, when I feel vulnerable, because I feel very vulnerable now, because I don't like that, my, I, I thought I, if I were to go through something like this, what I would do is keep people far away from me because then I would feel safe, you know? I have been amazed by how I just want people around me all the time and it's necessary and and because I'm so vulnerable and because I feel so weak I, I can only but be carried by people right now and you're all doing that you all do that with every message and every moment of encouragement or prayer or whatever and so yeah I suppose I just wanted to share I wanted to just share a little bit I mean you can we had my dad's memorial on Monday, and it, you know, we called it a celebration of life. It really was a celebration of life, and Dylan so beautifully said, um, "We're going to grieve today. We're going to uh, we're going to give glory to God. Uh, we're going to give we're going to give, bring honor to a man. We're going to grieve, but we're also going to bring glory to God." And it really was that. It was amazing to sit in a moment that was so painful and yet so beautiful. Like I couldn't. It was just so beautiful for me and so precious and I'm so, so grateful for everyone who was a part of pulling it off. It, it really was beautiful and I think such a testimony to a really wonderful man. I was very close to my dad um, and I, yeah, I just wanted to, to say that I really... This is hard hard for me, not only because it was such a shock, but I, I, I adored my dad. He was a really good father. He wasn't a perfect father. They don't exist. He was he was a really good dad. So easygoing and, and um, so kind and such a, such a such a man and I don't know. I think I think I said everything I needed to at the memorial. You're welcome to go and find it and listen to it if you want to know more. But it really was a beautiful moment. I'm grateful for it, and it was necessary. I'm realizing that um, it's hard these moments of um, losing someone because they're these necessary things that you need to do, but they really they really are tough and they require courage. And it was so funny. I woke up on Monday morning and I messaged Dylan and I said, um, "I don't want to do today." In fact, I refuse. I refuse to sit through my dad's memorial. I just can't do it. Like, it's so wrong on so many levels. <laughs> and it's so hard because you just don't want to do them. But but you have to because they're necessary and they're important. And um, so I wanted to ask you, just, I'm not going to keep you for long. I want to, I just want to share a little bit and then I'll let you go. But I want to ask you, I got some great advice um, the other day. I was just struggling, um, and I don't know, there was just some frustration and a few niggles going on around me, and this le uh, beautiful lady in our community said to me, you know, just, just lower your expectation right now. Just lower your expectation of everything, of life, of people, of moments, of environments. Just lower the expectation, because everybody is, everybody's struggling right now, and we all we all do this differently and you're going to keep setting yourself up for frustration and disappointment. It was such good advice. I'm so grateful for it because it really did help me in that moment. And it's something that I've shared with my children and I've just said, you know, asked, said to them, you know, in this moment we're all feeling things and they're all valid. 
and they're all real, but they're all different. And sometimes they're different. We're feeling things at different times. So sometimes I'm feeling really sad, but you're really happy because of something that's happened or something that you've been a part of. Neither of those are wrong. It's just that we need to lower our expectation right now because it's going to be the best way to be able to be kind to each other. And I wanted to ask you, as my community of women who know how to show up during hard times and be together through thick and thin, I wanted to ask you if you would lower your expectation of me for a moment. Because there's just moments where I feel okay, and then there's other moments where I feel sad, sad. And it's still very raw and fresh, and, and although God's been so kind, so outrageously kind to me, in the way he prepared my heart for a moment I never believed I could be prepared for. In the way that he has surrounded me. Um, and given me hope. It's not, it's not just what we say when someone dies. We have hope of eternity. It's breath. It's breath. In a moment where you feel like you can't breathe. The hope that we have. Our future glory is breath. And I'm so grateful to God. And so there are beautiful things he's showing me in this moment. In fact, I said to someone this morning, we went for a walk. Um, I labeled this your wisdom and understanding. <laughs> and I, I said, I want to be a scholar. This year I want to learn. I want to ask questions and I want to grow and I want to access supernatural wisdom and understanding. I realize now that in a space of grief, I am, I'm a scholar of life and it's, I don't want to be <laughs> the very thing that I ask for is now not what I want because I believe that this is going to be one of the most defining moments of my life. And I said a few weeks back in Tea with Tess, I need to reorder some things and reshape some things so that I can, I can take hold of what God is wanting to do in, in me and through me and what he wants to release and anoint in me. And I said, I don't want to miss it. I just didn't realize some of the things that were going to transpire in order for me to access what I believe he wants me to access. And that's hard. You are hard. But I am willing to be a scholar in this moment and to learn. And so I'm, I really am taking each day as an opportunity to grow and learn that nothing in this moment is wasted and so I'm a scholar in, in what it means to grieve and I have absolutely no idea what that's going to look like and so that's why I say to you I would love you to lower your expectation of me because there may be moments where you you want me to show up with something for you that I don't have to offer or you need something said or you need something seen and I can't give it to you and not that I should be because we're all responsible for our own spirituality but I do believe that I play a role in the facilitation of people's growth and um, understanding and you know relationship the process of Helping us all grow in relationship with Jesus. Um, I'm here for that. I'm excited about it. I just might not be able to give you what you need in this moment. And it's okay. It's okay. I still want to keep showing up and sharing my heart. Because like I said, there are things that God is showing me. And questions that I've been asking that I feel he's answering. And they're really beautiful. And I want to share them. Just not perhaps right now. I don't want to... Yeah, I, I don't want to rush ahead of what God is doing. I want to rest. I want to rest in this moment. 
and allow myself to be carried and cared for. Because I'm not very good at that. I'm actually terrible at it. Um, but I think that's what community is for. Community is there so that we can we can care for one another and carry each other through prayer, through encouragement, through physically being present if we can. And yeah, I just I don't want to miss this moment. I don't want to miss it because I got busy. I don't want to miss it because I felt like I had to be something for people. And so I'm just showing up as myself. And there will probably be many tears. Mm -hmm. But there will be also much joy. Because I believe that both can coexist. I mean, you know, my dad had passed away on the Monday. And I, um, I got on a plane on Friday to go and attend my brother-in-law and new beautiful sister's wedding. Um, and so many people kept saying to me, I don't, you know, you shouldn't have to do that. And, you, you know, you don't, why did you do that? Or... Um, it must have been so hard, and you know it was hard, facing people and um, and reliving the the pain and the loss in the moment, especially when you're in a big crowd, is hard. And there were moments where I felt very overwhelmed by my how how sad I was, and yet how much joy it was. But in the same breath, I was so happy for them. I absolutely was overjoyed to watch them come together and be married. I have been cheering these two on for as long as I can remember and I just I wanted to be there. It was it was almost effortless to celebrate them and to love on them and to be present for them. And in this weird way joy and excruciating pain could coexist. And I didn't I didn't know that was possible. I didn't. I suppose that's what happens when you go through something for the first time for yourself. It's not like watching someone else do it. For me, it, I'm going through it now. I'm learning. I'm seeing. And I learned something on Saturday. I learned that we can have great sorrow and great pain, but we can also have great joy. And they can somehow merge together. And Jesus so perfectly modeled that and lived that. And, and I feel like because he did and because he's done it, I don't have to strive in it. I can just do it. I can just be there and allow myself to feel authentically and it's real. And so these are kind of the things that are just popping up all the time. These moments of of learning, of being a scholar of life. And in a weird way, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to learn it. And... It doesn't make me miss my dad less or wish that he was still here less. I, I do. I still want him back. But it doesn't change the gratitude that I feel in the midst of all of it. It's just weird. It's it's so odd and bizarre, actually. And so I plan to drink more cups of tea with you and share little things along the way and immerse myself in scripture that I believe can help us all to see Jesus. Because at the end of the day, he is all that we need and he is enough. And he does fulfill, yeah, to the, to the detail, the desires of our hearts even in the most raw and painful moments and so I want to end now because I don't want to keep talking about myself I think it's too much <laughs> and I don't think you need to watch me cry for half an hour um but I wanted to be real with you and say look it's oh we're here I'm here I'm here this is where I'm at and I want to keep showing up and so Next week, I am away with my family. We have chosen as a family to go away for a week. To just be and rest. It's been quite full on. Um, and then I will be back for Sisterhood on the 17th of March. So I go away and I come back for Sisterhood. And I've planned it that way because I did not want to miss that moment. Um, sisterhood is everything to me. It is my community. It is my support. 
and I can't explain to you how everything that is happening in my life right now and the theme for sisterhood and the song it's all it's all part of God's most perfect plan for the girls of this earth and I promise you I am I'm blown away I'm blown away by him and so I'm so excited for that evening I don't even know how I can say I'm so excited but I am genuinely excited I'm expectant I believe it is going to be like nothing nothing you have experienced through what we've pioneered before it is the first time we are gathering in two years and so I just need a minute to go away and to prepare for sisterhood and so she doesn't know this yet but Amber is going to be doing tea with Tess next week go Ams <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we're going to gather as a sisterhood next week Thursday the 17th okay it's going to be beautiful I would highly encourage you to make your way here if you are in the Bolido area or the Durban area and you can get here come be with us if you cannot we're going to have it online because I know we have a big online community and uh, I don't want you to miss a thing so if you're overseas you could gather a little watch party you could make a moment you could um, you really could facilitate something very special um, with that evening and I, I honestly believe like we're going to do some oh, sorry my nose guys I, I look horrendous I know we're going to be doing some things that are quite significant and special in this evening in that evening so I would encourage you to try and have some people with you and not just watch on your phone is my mom <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I need a farm map. Uh, <laughs> guys, there's also lots of practical realities to this moment that are quite confronting. Anyway, Amber's there. She's excited. Hooray. And so that's what you can expect in the next week. Amber McMillan and then Sisterhood. And it's going to be amazing. And it's going to change your life. Hello, <laughs> Tessa's mom. She's amazing, because my mom is the strongest person I know in the world. Genuinely. Okay, so, please, diarize this moment, those dates, make space for it, make time for it. And, um, I can, I can almost categorically promise you that we are going to laugh and cry and go somewhere really glorious together. Um... I felt it in my spirit, and we were talking about sisterhood, that this was going to be a significant moment, possibly a transition. I now know more than ever how, um, how, yeah, God has, God has been preparing me for this moment, and I had no idea, but I'm, 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 I'm 100% certain that you get to be a part of something really quite mind-blowing uh, next week and he's using all of it he's using all of all of our lives all of my pain all of my messiness all of yours for his glory and his goodness and um, I can I can honestly say with confidence that I am I'm no longer satisfied with harp or noise or you know doing things just for the sake of doing things um, I'm going after Jesus because he's everything he's all that we need and I think I think you can really start to prepare your hearts for something beautiful because I know it's going to be amazing I just know it okay I'm going to pray for you and I want to ask that you continue to pray for my family. We are we're on a journey now. It's just one day at a time journey. And some days I'm sad, sad. And other days I'm just sad. And your prayers carry me. They do. They're not in vain. And so I would encourage you when you listen to worship or when you are on your own. Jesus, be with Jess. That's all you need to do. And it blesses me. Sorry, I think my battery's going flat. 
hilarious. Okay, right. I thank you, Jesus, for a community of women that know how to show up. We know how to show up when it's easy and when it's not so easy. And I just want to ask Holy Spirit that you would absolutely shower your blessing and favor upon every single woman who has gathered here this morning. The ones who are still here, the ones who are top off, the ones that will watch later, the ones who will find this in days to come. I pray, Lord God, that they would feel the kiss of heaven. These are not just words that I say that sound nice, Jesus. They are, they are the, the absolute affection of a father in heaven who loves his daughters. And I really do pray in the next few days, in the next moment, that every single girl here who is expectant to feel a touch from their father would feel one and know that you are real and you are good. And so even in this moment, even in my pain and grief, I want to declare your goodness and your kindness and your faithfulness and your truth. And I want to ask God that you would continue to give us a revelation of who you are. And would you empower us by the power of your spirit to rest in that revelation. I just pray your peace over my heart. And I pray your peace over every heart this morning watching. And I just, I really want to thank you girls for being present for me. And so would you bless them, Lord Jesus. And would you show them your heart for them. Would you show up for them like you've shown up for me. And would you, would you really present yourselves, yourself in their lives as they walk into their next moment. You're more than enough everything that we need and we take hold of that truth as we step into the rest of Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and we will see you and and yeah we just really I don't know I just want to take hold of the goodness of God today the absolute truth that he is good and kind and walk forward with that in Jesus name amen amen I love you girls thank you for being here Thank you for taking time to say hi and show up and yeah I'm sorry there was not much like profound scripture from me today just more a little catch up but I just wanted to let you know that I love you and I'm grateful for you and we will see you next week for Sisterhood Online and Amber McMillan the day before who's going to get you fired up for that moment and so prepare your hearts, gather your people, let's go somewhere, it's going to be awesome. Okay, love you.